Hello, Aidan Williams here, and you're listening to Man in the Mirror. This is the podcast where I talk to a male guest each week and have a sneaky peek inside their bathroom cabinets and find out about those key items and products that really work for them, and also a little bit more about their life, about work, and what makes them tick. This week on the podcast, I'm joined by David McConaughey. Now, David um, has two jobs, and I think even one of them would be busy enough, but um, he runs uh, an independent beauty skincare perfume shop down in Hampshire, opposite the Isle of Wight, and it's called Perfumery & Co. And he also is UK MD of uh, a perfume brand called L'Atelier Parfum. Um, He has a ton of experience in, in retail and buying and um, retail real estate. So really fascinating to to actually hear more about um, someone who understands the customer experience and and also being in independent retail, you know, the time they can take to to really answer the customer's needs. So it was really interesting to to talk to David. And, and you, I mean, I, I haven't met him in person, but just um, hearing him on, on the interview we did here, you know, you can tell he's someone that's really focused on on just working out what customers want and and, and delivering it for them and um, i'd definitely love to take a trip down to limington where the shop is and um, meet him in person because he was so lovely on this podcast so um i hope you can enjoy it i think you will it's david mcconaughey on man in the mirror david welcome along to man in the mirror thank you so much for joining me today hello it's lovely to be here so i was really keen to get you onto the podcast because I think you have a real unique insight. Not, not only do you look after, um, from the UK perspective, Atelier Parfum, the brand, but but also you run your own shop, Perfumery & Co. And I know there's going to be more shops soon. So you've got that understanding of the the selling part of it as well, which is, you know, so so critical and, and often the bit that gets missed out. You know, what does the customer actually think of these things that sort of are on the shelves i mean I, I i'd love to know really how did you how did you get involved in this world how did you find your way to to fragrance and, and grooming and skincare i mean um thank you for that introduction i i think um i was lucky enough to be asked to be a management trainee at john lewis and um as a gay guy i was always really interested in grooming and my yeah. appearance and wanting to look my best and I got placed um, as a manager into the perfumery and cosmetic department in John Lewis Brent Cross. Um, and sort of the rest is history. I found my home. I found um, my place where I wanted to be. I loved um, the products. I had consultants giving me all the top tips on what I should use, what I shouldn't use. Yeah. Um, and I love the relationship with fragrance that you either love it or you hate it. So you smell one and you're thinking, oh, that's too strong. That's not for me. Or you find one that defines your personality. And for me, um, when I was placed in other departments like ladies' shoes or handbags, you know, because I was on secondments, there was nothing that um, compared. And it's, it's so interesting. And I think, you know, my relationship with, with fragrance and, and grooming is, is of getting more passionate about it is much more recent, but I, I found the same thing really that that once you take an interest, it's sort of it is like disappearing down a rabbit hole, isn't it? There's so much to learn, so many sort of wonderful people in that industry, and I, you've been so fortunate to to make it your your living for such a long time. Can you to tell me a bit about what happened after after retail? Did you get into the brand side of things? Well, yeah, that's interesting. So um, I love being with customers, first of all, and I'm naturally an outgoing personality. So I can make a customer feel incredibly relaxed straight away. And um, I really found having done many years on the floor, um, that I really wanted to work for a brand. So I went to uh, Neil Jard Remedies, actually, which isn't a perfume brand by any means, but it's a natural beauty brand and health brand. And I wanted to be on the side of the brand, and I loved it. Um, yeah. I loved being able to work with the entrepreneurs and product developers who were bringing products to market and understand that process because it's it's literally, it takes years often to bring products to market, which someone might try straight away and say, oh, I don't like it. Um, and I know how hard the brands have worked on it. So 
I went into Neil Judd Remedies and um, I had an absolutely lovely time, sort of in some ways, growing up with a brand there. Yeah. And I was fortunate enough to work with the founder um, and owner, Remy Fraser, who was a visionary. And it's so funny when today everyone's talking about eco refills and recycling. Of course, yeah. She was doing that 40 years ago. And when were you there, David? I joined Neil Jard um, probably in 2000. Um, right. So a long time ago. There was 25 stores. Um, the brand was really starting to get noticed. Um, and it really empowered me because um, it was a small team. You'd done a lot of everything. So I was handling yeah. leases. I was like 24 years old. Um, I had no experience of doing that. Um, and you often juggle a lot of balls being a part of a brand, a smaller brand. Um, and that is sort of where I really thrive. I thrive with giving the opportunities and being trusted and, and taking it to the next level. Um, and I'm very determined, so I won't give up either. And it's such a good way to learn, isn't it? Those kind of, those kind of jobs where you have to wear multiple hats and, and you can learn off a smaller team. It just seems like a way where people can thrive and, and really develop. And that, Sounds like what what happened with your career. And where did you go after Neil's Yard? So after Neil's Yard, I went to L'Occitane en Provence. Um, mm. So it's that beautiful French retailer that often nobody can pronounce the name. Yeah, I did have to ask you because I, I was I thought I'd fumble it, and and I, it turns out I've been saying it wrong all the years. So it's L'Occitane. As with most people, it's <laughs> part of its charm, though, isn't it? Because it's a lovely conversation starter, mm. and you can um, obviously then just talk them through the ethos and what the brand was about. So I was with them for um, 13 years um, and I worked for an exceptional um, leader there called David Boynton, who's the CEO of Body Shop today. He gave me great um, opportunities. He trusted me. He gave me great insights as to um, how to learn from, you know, he was a very much a retailer. And we'd done things with that brand in the UK that other markets weren't doing. And we were getting incredible results. Um, and so by really working hard and taking chances and doing things differently, um, we went from being one of the worst profitable com countries in the portfolio to being one of the best. Um, and that turned around pretty quickly. And what, what were those things that you were doing that, that, that made a difference? Was it sort of customer-led stuff? Spending time in store. Um, yeah. listening to the customer, looking yeah. at the assortment critically, looking at the offer, looking at the way we were communicating with the customer, um, always bringing the customer to the forefront. And and I, I say now um, all the time, retail never died. Retail just changed. The customer mm. changed the way they shop. But retailers allowed themselves to die by self-checkout, bring your own bag, don't speak yeah. to us. Um, and that's so opposite to anything we do in our business and, and anything lots of time done as well. You know, it was never about, it was always about taking people on the journey. Um, mm. but the minute you forget about the customer, you may as well just shut your door. It's so true, isn't it? And I think, you know, we, we all recognize that, that thing now where, you know, even, even well, there's a lot of shops you can go in and that drive towards automation and as you say, self, self checkout and, it is quite easy to lose lose the thing that was so great about going to shops and to high streets, which is that, that what might seem like a really sort of small connection you have with a someone in a shop or one of the assistants. But, you know, it's really important. Those little social interactions are so important, aren't they? And you, you obviously sound like someone who's really tuned into that and, and knows how to knows how to talk to customers and, and obviously in the end, you know, get people to, to buy things but i guess in in fragrance and beauty and, and the grooming in this, this world we're talking about here it, you're right it's it doesn't feel like something that can be you know you can just kind of scan your barcode and go out yourself you're going to need ad advice and and opinion and um, someone to help you sort of navigate those different products i would say absolutely and the the onslaught of what happens by the brands or the you know, let's just look at certain companies that do that, is they're also saying to their staff, don't speak to your customer. Um, yeah. Just yeah. fill the shelves, make sure it's replenished for them. You know, I've, I've you know, gone into a supermarket, for example, not picked up a basket, grabbed one or two many things. I've dropped a few bits. The staff don't even turn around and pick things up and help you. I mean, yeah. literally the art of customer service 
is missing. And that's why it's so hard to get a table in a great restaurant because people, it's so easy to do things okay. Um, but it takes as much work just to do things really good. Um, it, it's yeah. not any more work. It's just a choice of, that people oh, make. Right. And, and I really believe we in our own store that we really service the customer. We see them way more frequently than officially by any data statistic we should. Um, mm. Because customers love to be spoiled and the diversity with men and women in our store is nearly equal. The guys love coming into is our it shop. Really? Oh, that's really interesting. And that's a sort of lovely segue. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely talk a bit more about retail and, and your shop at Perfumery & Co. in a little while. But I think it would be great. You know, the, the idea of Man in the Mirror is to to talk talk to someone in the industry and, and find out find out about themselves. But also, I'd, I'd really, I'm trying to learn more about products. And I think the, a great way of doing that is, is getting recommendations from other people. And I thought... To get David on, who's you know worked for a long time in the industry, you must have a, a very good understanding of what works in terms of skincare and grooming f- f- for you, let alone things to recommend. So it would be great to, to talk through maybe some of your bathroom essentials, some of your sort of key items that that um, that really work for you um, and your life. So could you tell me a bit about um, yeah your your regime? I suppose in in the morning, are you? Is it a sort of extensive skincare and, and um, grooming routine? What, what do you do about grooming What's in, in terms of shaving and everything? Is, is, that, is that a sort of daily ritual? Or, or more it's definitely a daily ritual for me. Um, I was fortunate or unfortunate enough to lose my hair quite young with a receding okay. hairline at around 24. Yeah. Okay. So I've shaved my head. Um, so I'm a big – I shave every day. But it's so interesting um, that I hear – every day um ladies and gents saying i don't have time to do this i wouldn't have time to oh god i don't have the time to do that and in my world i think oh my god you're missing out on such a fabulous personal experience yeah so i'm a big fan of cleansing and a big fan of double cleansing um and if you cleanse first of all and i love using a milk a cleansing milk. There's a lovely one by Clarins that I love, the Velvet Cleansing Milk. And if you've ever had a Clarins facial, they do this cupping motion on your face and it opens up the pores, let the product in, the product gets stimulated so it can do what it needs to. I wash that off and then I redo it again. Then I shave that off. And um, that means I'm literally, I've double cleansed my face and I'm using the cleanser to become my shaving product as well. So I'm cutting out a step, you could say, of the shaving product. Okay. So you use the the cleanser rather than some sort of shaving gel or foam? Yeah, because I I genuinely believe lots of people will do the shaving foam and then forget to wash their face. Mm. And actually the area of the face that doesn't have the hair, which is the T-zone, the forehead and the nose, are the areas that are most prone to the um to the elements that we're walking in so that's why people have a lot of open pores or oily t-zone areas so i personally believe cover the whole face in the cleanser really cleanse incredibly well remove that daily dirt start of the day end of the day um and then shave off and and are you a what kind of razor so cutthroat razor or I'm, I'm a mac or? three boy to be honest um yeah I love them, the one with the battery and the, the razor. Um, yeah. I like the blade. It never cuts me. I get a really smooth shave. I don't ever need to double shave. Um, and by using the cleanser through the razor, it also never blocks the razor. So it, everything flows through. I don't have to bang the sink or all those mm. issues that us boys have to work through. <laughs> um, after, after I've cleansed, et cetera, and had my shower, um, I love to then tone. And this is always a step that everyone thinks, oh, I have no time for that. Yes. So I use mm. a orange flower toning um, water from Neil Shad Remedies with an atomizer, spray my face, and instantly you feel your face being rehydrated and it's rebalancing the pH of my skin. Yeah. But it's a step that I've done forever and a step that so many people don't bother with. Yeah, they and, so. it's um, important, isn't it? It's really important. And once you do it, um, you don't ever stop. I then use a um, treatment essence on my skin. 
which um, I get between the marine essence from Elemis and the super restorative essence from Clarins. And it's like a thick, um, like a thick milky um, lotion. And by putting that on, that basically prepares the skin for the moisture um, that you're going to be putting into it with your serums and your moisturizer. Okay. And I find having shaved my skin, it just gives my skin this real feeling of um, like putting some silk over it and just treating it really yeah. well. Um, I'm then a big fan of serums, love a serum. Um, yeah. I place two little spots onto my hand, um, rub it warm and press it into my skin. I never rub it into my skin. I press it. I always do my neck. Um, and then I do my eye serum straight afterwards. And I love to um, place a little bit on the top of my palm, get my two fingers and then press it around the eye bone of the face, top, bottom, round the eyebrow, underneath. Um, and I find that has always served me very well. And then my final step then would be my moisturizer. So I put on my um, often um, Pro Collagen SPF 30 by Elemis um, okay. face cream. Or if I'm not using an SPF, I'll use Super Restorative by Clarins. And they go in beautifully. They make your skin look incredible. Um, they stimulate the skin. Um, they keep me really hydrated. And yeah, I, I then feel that I'm, I feel like I'm nearly dressed um, because I feel my face is ready. That's a good regime. And and it sounds like you've stayed fairly loyal to those kind of products, David. Are, are they fairly consistent, those ones those ones you mentioned? Yeah, when I was at L'Occitane for 12 years, I was full L'Occitane um, yeah. in my regime. And now within our store, we have all of the top brands. So I'm sort of spoiled by using yeah. like the best of the best that's available. Um, yeah. So I pick and choose. Um, and obviously, I've got my favorites. And I'm a real... I really like a product to do what it's supposed to. Like, yeah, I love no. using a cleansing balm, but it has to wash off. And when it doesn't, I just won't ever go back to using it. And when yeah. it does, I'm I'm then I'm a loyal human naturally. Um, so I absolutely love to to indulge in products and keep it in some ways simple. But I'm really consistent, and mm. you know I it's hear all, I mean, all the time people say, "Oh God, your skin looks so good." And of course, I just think it's my skin. But I have always looked after it. Yeah, David does, I can confirm, on the webcam, he does have glowing skin. Um, and I guess it's important as well that you you use the different products in the store and you, you, you're you able to pass comment and, and tell people how effective they are. So I guess you do have to try different things, right? You do. And I think um, what's nice about our store being so multi-brand is we can get customers to multi-brand shop because actually um, – there's some products that, of course, everyone has a, a hero product. Mm. And why should we keep that a secret? You know, it's important that we let customers try it, demonstrate it, put it on their skin, let them see what they think. And some people, you know, react, it could react really well with someone. They might not like it. They might be more bought into sticking with a brand to get a gift with purchase. Mm. Um, but ideally, we try to really um, share all our knowledge within our team with our yeah. customer. But it's so interesting because I also do um, QVC guest presenting for Latelia Parfum, which oh, is uh, more on QVC. Yeah. When I go on there, I don't wear any makeup. I don't wear any blusher or anything because my skin's always just been so looked after. Um, yeah. And if I look at myself, if I watch it back, I feel really happy that I'm naturally on that brand, naturally on that yeah. screen, not with loads of foundations on and color. Um, because that isn't who I am personally, but also my skin's not demanding that of me either. Yeah, because you look after it, I guess. But it's interesting also, I think, you know, that what's great about an independent shop like yours or whether it's an independent perfumery, you know, it, it feels like much, to me, a much more intuitive way of, of people shopping anyway. That idea that, you, you know, of course, people are, are loyal to certain brands, but that every product in that line is going to be the the right one for them. Your way of doing it, of of introducing different brands and, and, and different things, that, that just feels like, you know, it, it's, it's more difficult in some of those big department stores or obviously individual brand stores because they're, they're sort of artificially in a way trying to lead you down one path, aren't they? It feels like a, a much better way in, in, in those shops. 
absolutely spot on. And don't forget, even like brands like Space NK, um, which is a beautiful retailer, mm. they own most of the brands that are in their store. Whereas if you're us as an independent um, beauty retail perfumery store, um, we are talking totally unbiased to you. Yeah. Um, we have training by the brands. Um, and if you tell me, if you come into our store and say, you have this problem with your skin, I've got that whole catalog of product um, to try and give you the best prescription for your skin that you need. And I think that's the way retail has to go. I think you have to, you know, really try and get your customer the right thing. And that's what's going to bring them back to our shop um, because they could easily go onto clarins.com and order the product, no problem. So why yeah. do they choose to come to us? I think, yeah, you're, it sounds like you're, you're giving them, well, amazing customer service. So tell me, David, about your relationship with fragrance. Are, are you, obviously, you know, you have, um, you, you sell it and you're an MD for, for a company as well. Uh, do, you, do you tend to choose, you have this sort of fragrance wardrobe idea? Do you, you know, do you choose it according to the season or your mood or, or, or do you tend to stick to one signature particularly? Um, I've been a fragrance junkie for, I mean, ever since I think I was 15. Yeah. And I would describe fragrance or my fragrance wardrobe um, like a piano. I've got a whole collection of beautiful fragrances, which I've loved for, you know, the fragrances that are in them, but also the bottles, the displays, the aesthetics yeah. of it, and the story of the brands. But ultimately, um, I don't think every day you wake up and you feel like the same person. Of course you are. No. But, you know, let's say you're off to Greece for a holiday. You're not going to wear some heavy fragrance um, that, you know, is associated with your daily life at work. You're going to want something fresh and something that's going to um, invoke a memory of where you, where you are. But likewise, it's going to make you adjust to the temperature that you're you know, you're going to be in. I've got fragrances that are, um, you know, if you wanted to go to a black tie, then I've got that fragrance. I've got a fragrance to sit on the beach in Mykonos or, you know, a fragrance I'd like to go shopping in or a fragrance I'd wear on my day off that I wouldn't wear ever in the store um, to try and create a zone of a layer of me and my space. Um, so I, I, I mean, I, the idea of just having one fragrance or if you're trapped to one fragrance makes me really yeah. sad. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Because there's so many out there, isn't there? Oh, my goodness. That idea of, of different piano notes is, is absolutely perfect. And I think, yeah, I think we can all identify with that idea of um, you know, different different scents for different moods. So um, we're here in the UK in late May. What What, what are you wearing today? Well, I've just changed up my fragrance. So um, I feel with the you know, spring-summer situation that we're sort of, <laughs> I, I say sort of enjoying, because I look out the window yeah. where I am and it's raining. It's a um, raining day. But yeah. I'm wearing yeah. Latelia Parfums um, Virtue Fury, which is a blood orange um, fragrance. Um, it's um, wrapped up with grapefruit, lemon, and sandalwood is a, a big component for me, and white cedar, and it's all in there. And it's a lovely fragrance that makes me feel really fresh. It makes me think summer's on the way. Um, it's a fragrance that, and I think that's really important about fragrance, that you don't smell the person before you see the person. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't leave a trail of your fragrance. But when you're in the company of the person, their fragrance is a natural complement to the person you're with. And that fragrance for me is absolutely that. Yeah. Coincidentally, David, um, you might be surprised, but knowing I was talking to you today and I've kindly been sent a few of the, the testers for um, Atelier Parfum, I'm, I'm also in Virtue 4 e today because it, yeah, it feels like such a joyful fragrance, that lovely, you know, the kind of bite of the citrus, but there's um. Yeah, there's a, a, a lovely sort of light floral quality to it as well. I, I think I, I think it's a really beautiful fragrance, and um, it's been, been one that I've been reaching for quite regularly. I think it's, it's gorgeous. It really is, isn't it? And I think it just it makes you smile. It makes you think yeah. it's a very healthy fragrance. Um, 
and because it's a natural fragrance and um, it's fully sustainable in terms of its production from the packagings to the ingredients and everything's all made in Europe and sourced in Europe. Um, that makes me feel good as well. You know, I don't think packaging should come from the other side of the world. Um, no. For example, if it's homegrown in France. So it's a traditional French fragrance. It's made in in grass in Provence, which is the capital of of perfume as we know. And um, as you smell it, you can smell that quality of that essence. And, you know, having worked in the industry for 25 years, I had only want to smell the best of the best. Um, yeah. And to be able to de- detect the notes when you smell them um, is a real compliment to the perfumer that's that's created that fragrance. Absolutely. And, and as you say, you know, having worked in the industry for, for such a long time in all these different areas, what, what was it that made you want to start working with Atelier Parfum, you know, having s- smelt so many different things and, and knowing what you like, what, what was it about that brand that you wanted to get involved with and, and look after the UK? Well, it was interesting because um, when I reached the ripe old age of, you know, 40 and I, I wanted to work for myself, I wanted to live where I wanted to live. I wanted to, I'd signed maybe 300 leases at Loxitone all around the world Gosh. for them. Wow. And I'm a retailer at heart. And I thought, why have I never been brave enough to sign my own lease of a store? Mm. And of course, COVID was just so live and shops were being shut down. And <laughs> it's yeah. like the timing yeah, was, yeah. in some respects, terrible on paper. Um, but I knew, I knew I could make it work. Um, and having had the store and listening and working with customers again, which I hadn't done for years, you know, in management managing director roles, it really inspired me to think, God, there's something so special we can create here. And um, two friends of mine who are the founders of Atelier Parfum, Marsha and Nikolai, um, they were chatting to me about the new journey that they're on. And and I was very much like, oh, God, yeah, I'll, I'll stock it in my store. I'd love yeah. to have your brand on board. And, you know, they said to me, because I'd worked with them such a long time at Loxatown, please, 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 would you consider being the, you know, the managing director of the UK and distributing the brand for us? And it felt that actually that would be a lovely progression for the store. And also, um, I'm deeply passionate about fragrance and perfume, but the story of the sustainability, it being vegan, it being naturally derived, everything ticking boxes that are really important to me. Mm. Why would I not do that? Why would I not um, share that with with other people? And, you know, at the end of the day, I've had it in our store and it sells really well. Um, Does it? Most it's months really it beats Hermes. Like, it's doing so well. And people might not even know the brand, yeah. but they know something nice when they smell it. Well, I think the, the whole look of it as well, it's got a very sort of fresh, modern aesthetic, hasn't it? hundred percent agree. And there's a new collection arriving um, late summer, which is Opus 2. And it's inspired by the Middle East. So there's leathers and ouds coming. And that's all in the similar packaging. But the pack, the, um, the boxing has a, a beautiful, darker secret to it. So it, you look at it and you think, well, that's going to be like a really beautiful evening fragrance. And yeah. You know, there's a collection of candles coming as well. So there's lots of newness oh, coming to the brand. Because there's so much ambri- ambition um, at there. And also, we know that that's a demand from the customer so far. I'm always full of admiration for for founders and, and MDs like yourself when you're taking on a brand. Because, I mean, even in my sort of relatively more, more recent experiences, there's just so much out there isn't there there's so so many brands so many new releases it, it, it must be a real challenge to to, to create create some, some a point of difference and create um a, a character for your for your range do, do, you, do you ever feel like that it's like you know how do you how do you create noise how do you create something that's um hasn't been done before um every day i'd say that is a huge challenge because i think you rightly say in some respects the whole category and industry is saturated and um there's you know as as humans do we always need so much choice 
Of course we don't. We only have to look at what's going on in the world to think, Jesus, these things um, aren't as in, uh, clearly aren't important <laughs> compared to what other people are There's other stuff going on. So our choice is vast, and we're very lucky to be in that position. But you're absolutely right. The way to make a noise and a splash is for its, the product to actually also do its, its job as well. So it doesn't matter mm. who's talking about it, selling it, um, what PR it's getting. Of course, it's incredibly important. But there's nothing that's going to change your mind from when you smell it. So if you smell it and you don't like it, you've written it off straight away. So yeah. the product itself has to do its job. And the collection of Opus One, um, you know, of course, there's some people that love every single one, but there's some people that only love one. But that's great. Mm -hmm. um, in store, we use um, hand fans, you know, like the Spanish fans that ladies yes. would use. Yeah. And we scent them with fragrance and we, we wave our customers with the fans. And it shocks the customer because no one's ever demonstrated fragrance like that to them. They're always generally given a scent strip. Yeah. And by doing that, they're really smelling the notes coming with the air in the air. And it's incredible. So having little unique points of difference. Yeah, well, that's a great idea because I guess it sort of diffuses a bit more and it could sort of, you, you maybe get it all around you a bit more than you would just off a strip. Yeah. And also sometimes I might not even spray the fan and let them smell the fan that had been sprayed maybe a couple of hours ago. Yeah. Just to let the customer understand the concentration and talk through the difference of perfume versus at a toilette. Um, and also understand its lasting power. People want yeah. perfumes to stay. Eau de toilettes, I think, are becoming, they will become extinct um, because the pricing isn't that much cheaper anymore. Um, and, you know, generally people want to smell nice all day. Um, they don't want to keep refreshing. Yeah. That's so interesting to, to hear you talk about. And, you know, that sort of retail theatre is so, is, so important and again i think you know it comes with people that are passionate and know what they're doing to sort of make it more interesting than just sort of you know arriving in a department store and having people just sort of aimlessly kind of spraying at you and that which feels like such a i don't know like a hard sell and it really does and pleasant. we you know we will get people that will come in and say well, can i get a sample i don't give them out we don't give them out like that i'll say i'll take you on a fragrance journey yeah. Let's take you, let's do a fitting with Explain you. What it. are you wearing today? What have you worn before? Yeah. What notes really inspire you? And we we take that customer who didn't know they were going to go on that journey um, around the store, show them perfumes or fragrances that we know they should like due to the notes in certain fragrances that they've used before, like Sauvage, for example. Um, but if you like Sauvage, you're easily going to like Verti Fury. You're easily yeah. going to like, you know... Um, other products that are around by Hermes or Mont Blanc. Um, but they, they just don't know that because they're a little shy. But by mm. the journey that we take them on and make them feel really relaxed, um, they love it. They absolutely think yeah. I've had a really nice experience. So more yeah. often than not now, due to that being a fun experience, um, we get people coming in to buy gift vouchers for these experiences that we, it's naturally happened. Yeah. Because people have had so much fun. So often mothers come in, they spend £150 getting a, their son a voucher that they want them to come in and, and experience the art of perfumery and um, and get to know us and um, really want them to have a nice experience, not just buy them something from a gift set and hope that they yeah. use it. But it's, it's there's so much in that. And I think, you know, for, for a start, again, the, the, the slight cliche sometimes that men – you know, sort of creatures of habit and just keep buying, if we're, if we're not careful, just keep buying the same thing because, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. But as you say, you know, if you, if a good retailer or a good sales assistant sort of opens someone's eyes and says, well, you know, if, if you like this, you might want to try this. And, and if it doesn't have to be quite so much about a certain brand, you know, we would all be amazed at how many beautiful perfect uh, other perfumes we'd, we'd fall in love with. And I think it's, it's, it's that, that thing of just shifting perceptions and you know, there's nothing unmanly about being interested in it. And, you know, you don't have to sort of apologize for wanting to have a few different bottles on your shelf and all of that stuff, which is, you know, going to for hours. But I, I, you know, I can only 
you know, I experienced the same thing with, with mates of mine. It just it almost becomes this sort of furtive conversation of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sort of interested and in, can I, can I smell that from your shelf and all that? So like, yeah, of course you can. And it's, it's a joy to, as you do, to kind of communicate it and share, share the love of it. And I think as once people, once that key's unlocked, people love it, don't they? And they, as you say, they're coming back for more and bringing their family and enjoying that experience. And it is just, yeah, but making it more of an experience and, and showing people there's nothing scary about it, I suppose. Yeah, we've got a, a, a customer comes to mind last Saturday called Martin, who was in with his wife. He was getting her a fragrance for her birthday the week before. I took her on her journey, but I also took Martin on the fragrance journey. And if I could show you how he smelt the perfumes, he literally would close his eyes and he would literally go on this magical journey with his nose with every Love perfume we showed him it was a pleasure yeah. it was a wonderful pleasure to serve him oh, great. so of course he came back the oh, following great. week and then he bought three parfums de Mali and you know one of them was 295 it's an expensive perfume but he you know, he loved the experience in the store he loves perfumes you know and at the same time we poured him a glass of champagne and i think if you're going to be on that journey of investing in a perfume at that value it should be a lovely experience so yeah. i'm pretty sure martin will always come back to our store he'll always yeah. um, walk away thinking i had a really nice experience um i remember well, buying I our engagement life, rings yeah. myself and my partner in cartier and when we'd done them they served as cartier champagne and again it's just a lovely experience it's a nice touch um, and there's not it doesn't matter what you're selling um, to make someone feel so comfortable and to make them walk away thinking, I loved that so much. Um, it's such a compliment. And to hear the after talk if they leave the space of, oh, that was amazing. Oh, my God, who knew that existed? I'll only ever want to buy perfume here. Yeah. And guys, that, oh, It must make you feel really good. Yeah, and like builders who come in who have got really bad skin due to the environments they're working in. A few little top tips and getting the right couple of products in their hands. They come by and say, "Look at my skin." I'm like, oh, "Let's talk anti aging next time." Now we've dealt with that <laughs> issue, so and they love it. They love it. So it's just making it's everyone feel comfortable. Yeah. And um, but again, it goes back to that whole thing of um, not ignoring the customer, and that's yeah. exactly what's happened within the industry. And they're individuals, aren't they? They're going to have different needs and, and wants. I mean, who wants to walk up to a I, I don't personally, a makeup or fragrance counter that's got 10 people working at it looking at me. I don't want to do that. I mean, I could think of nothing more intimidating. No. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's nice now. We see so many men um, shopping with us um, for their skincare, for their perfume, for their gifting needs that are so loyal that might have actually come to the New Forest on holiday, call us from Northampton, or Sheffield to send products for their friends' gifts or whatever. Yeah. It's right. so nice. David, tell me uh, how, what, what's your relation? I think some of this you've, you've actually touched on when you were talking about your, your routine, but in the podcast, I'm really interested to have an understanding of, of how my guest is of, you know, when you look in the mirror now at, at this point in, in your life stage, how do you feel when, uh, when you see what, what looks back at you? Are, are you are you sort of comfortable in your skin? How do you feel about your appearance now? I'm really comfortable in my skin, and you know, as they say, as you get older, you know, when someone says, "Oh, wish I was 21 again," I don't. Um, really, I, I I just think, God, what I've gained in life experience today, I feel really comfortable with who I am, where I am. Um, oh my God, I'd love to be like two stone lighter. Um, so would I. you know, it's so unfair that if you enjoy a glass of wine, you put weight on. Um, <laughs> it's just wrong. It's a liquid. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to have a metabolism that just meant I was one of those people that could put weight on. Um, but you know, that isn't my DNA. Um, so I'd. I feel really happy with with who I am, where I am, how I look. Um, I really enjoy. Um, you know, as we know, skincare and perfume. And, and I feel mm. that my commitment to its use um, has put my skin in a, in pretty good shape for the age I am today at 45. And um, 
yeah, and I also, I'm not a big fan of the sun. The sun doesn't love me, and I think that's also been really good for my skin yeah. as well. Um, I don't have age spots. I don't know if there's dark marks that appear on skin when the sun comes out. Um, and I think the power of SPF and not baking in the sun is yeah. really important. Yeah. Do you burn in the sun? burn oh my god yeah and it's i'm the worst for even if i lay on the beach and i've been on holiday with friends over the years and i've got friends that go beautifully brown you know like yeah so beautifully brown that if you put some body oil on it would just look like a magazine photo shoot <laughs> and i would be that person would have that red mark or that bit of white that would never go brown yeah. so i've just stopped trying i just i came to terms with that wasn't the skin I was given with an Irish mother and a Scottish father, <laughs> you know, it just, I'm not that Latino and <laughs> it's just not yeah, going to happen. You, your skin is thanking you for it now. You're, yeah. And you just have to, time. you have to embrace who you are and yeah. um, enjoy who you are. And I love seeing that also so much more also with redheads. Cause I see really people really embracing their hair colors where before people would always dye it or whatever. And yes, I just think you just have to be who you are and, and love the skin you're in. Easy to say, mm. but that being a bit older and having that experience, um, it does it does help. Yeah, I mean we're at a, a, a similar life stage. I'm 49, but I mean it, it's, it's. I agree. I think it's it's so great to to hear the way you talk about it. And I think you know, obviously there's, as you say, you know, I I would prefer to be a bit lighter and all of those things but I think that I've just started to realize in the last few years there is a sort of a liberation of just feeling a bit more happy in your own skin and and I think that's sometimes that almost exudes as well doesn't it I think you feel if you feel a bit lighter and and happier that that comes across or just more comfortable in who you are I think that that comes across and um yeah it's, it's great to hear the way you the way you talk about it I think perfumes um, give you a confidence as well. So right. when you, yeah. you know, you spray something on and it's got the right notes that complement that right person, um, it can give you a confidence as well. Um, we done a makeover with a customer last Friday, and she's a farmer, and she said to me for the first time in ten years, David, I feel sexy. Oh, that's lovely. It was so lovely, and yeah. she said, I haven't said that or felt that in such a long time. Um, but she's been on a journey with her skin with us. And, you know, I put a beautiful, one of our, it's called Bell Josie perfumes on her. And it's a really, it's like a tropical, it's got peach in there and strawberry. and It's lovely. And she felt a million dollars and she said it. And I could even tell when she said it, she really meant it. Yeah. Even though she was probably going home to have a cup of tea on a Friday night <laughs> on her own. Um <laughs> But it's still what an amazing thing to hear, though. Yeah, and she came back in on Tuesday, and she bought some more eyeshadows and other bits that she didn't have on the day. And she said, "I just really, really, really love this shop, and I love how um, it's given me my confidence back in terms of." Mm. And she was a model years ago, thirty years ago. Really. So um, yeah, it's so interesting how you know, and I I find the perfumes are the finishing touch. It's like putting your shoes on. Um, yes. You're not yeah. dressed if you don't have that little spray. And if someone buys perfume with us, you know, I had a guy in yesterday and um, he bought his perfume and I said, do you, have, are you wearing anything today? He said, no. I said, could I, could I fragrance you? And so I fragrance him and we leave him. And I guarantee as he left, his tissue was sent in the bag. He walked out there, his shoulders were right back and he felt great. Oh. And, you know, that makes me feel really satisfied about that experience. Yeah, I love it. It's like a superpower. It just gives that sort of you know, invisible power. It's amazing. So I, I like to ask my guests as well, David, what, about your, your happiness. What, what what makes you, I mean, it, I guess it can be as, as big or small a question as, as you like, but what makes you happy? Um, I'm very content in my life. I've been with my partner for over 20 years. Um, we've got a lovely home. We're both healthy. Um, you know, we pay ourselves, which I love the fact that, you know, we're independently um, supporting yeah. ourselves and we've got a team of employees that are now being paid by our dream of creating our business. 
Um, and so I think that's work with you in the store. Yeah, in the store and um, and helping us, you know, with our QVC operation, we have a lot of um, operational logistics to to get products to QVC and everything's yeah. shipped and prepared for the customer here locally, not by QVC themselves. So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And I feel really proud that, you know, two years ago, you know, we had relocated back from the States and, and now, you know, we've built this lovely business that's it's healthy and it's going to grow. And, mm. um, when living in a place in the country that's, I mean, it's nature's nature's paradise. It's having the coastal line that you look over to the Isle of Wight and then you turn your back and you can walk through the new forest with your little dog. So it's just bliss. Oh, um, sounds I don't need to be sitting in bars or I've done all that in my New York days. Um, yeah. So I feel very content and at peace with where I am today. And, um, and I appreciate what I have. And I also know that, um, it's a choice and working hard always serves you well and um, yes. having determination and ambition um, will put you in a good place. Oh, David, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on the podcast and honestly, the the, the passion and dedication in, in what you do and, and how you think about the customer absolutely shines through and um, I... I recommend people head down there and I must follow uh, my advice as well. I might come down and see you at Perfumery and Co. I know there's a, there's more store openings coming. There's another one coming in Ringwood in the new forest this year as well. Um, it, it's been a pleasure just finding out about your, your life and, and hearing how well it's going. I'm, I'm thrilled that this new business, you know, opening a, an independent retailer in, in this environment post pandemic and everything is, is incredible and it, it's fantastic to hear how well it's going and it sounds I well I know it's going well because of your dedication to your knowledge and and your dedication to the customer so um I'll, I'll in the show notes I'll, I'll put a little bit more about some of the products you mentioned so that people can check them out but um thank you so much for your for your time and, and sharing your knowledge with us here on man in the mirror thanks David thank you for having me it's been an absolute pleasure oh you take care see you soon bye-bye I'm so grateful to David for spending some time talking to me. Um, I did the interview a, a few weeks ago and um, yeah, just listening back then, it was really, really interesting to hear his point of view. And um, what I'll do in the show notes is write up some of the products that David was talking about. And um, I think he had an in incredible insight and, and all those years of retail experience. I mean, it, it all comes across. So thank you to David. Um, if you want to find out more about Perfumery and Company, Perfumery and Co. Um, you can find them on Instagram. It's Perfumery and Company, all one word. So Perfumery, A N D, Company. So P E R F U M E R Y A N D, Company, C O M P A M Y, Perfumery and Company. And that's also the website. So www.perfumeryandcompany.com. Um, you can also find out more about um, Latelia Parfum. Um, they're on Instagram at Latelia Parfum. But I'll put all this in the show notes as well so thank you to david um it was an absolute pleasure and thank you to you for listening um i'd love you to drop a review or a comment if you've enjoyed the podcast on, on whatever platform you're on it'd be great if you could subscribe write a review and um give me some stars that would i think these things apparently really help so um i'd appreciate it if you could do that thank you very much well look take care i'll see you next time on man in the mirror